Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Ah, oh, that's better. Protectyourbubble.com. Proud sponsors of Swipe on Sky News. You're watching Swipe on the show this week. Using old tech to make new music, we meet the chiptunes DJs bringing back 8-bit. You've heard of smartphones and smart watches. How about smart pedals? And a summer sandbox epic. Does The Witcher 3 live up to the hype? Find out in our games review. Hello and welcome to Swipe. This week we've immersed ourselves in the world of retro video games. But we're not here to get reacquainted with Sonic and Mario. Instead, we're making music. Because Stu's been taking a look at the global phenomenon known as chip tunes. You join together separate phrases. So then when you press play on those, it kind of links them all together into a single phrase of a song. You've probably heard chip tunes at some point, even if you're not familiar with the term. Also known as chip music or 8-bit music, these are songs made using retro games consoles. Game Boys, Master Systems, Ataris and Commodores make up the orchestra in this genre, and DJs like Joe are the performers. This is one of my favourite ones I like playing live with. Um, for no other reason just than, than for the sheer hell of it, I built in some flashing LEDs on the back of it so when it's switched on, um, you've got like the, the different multicoloured flashing LEDs in there. It doesn't add anything for the music, um, but it is a lot of fun. You may already be dismissing chip tunes as niche, but this is a movement with thousands of admirers around the world. The Superbike Festival in Manchester is an event dedicated to 8-bit music, it's been running since 2012 and is the largest event of its kind in the UK. 400 people went last year. It's surprising what you can get out of something that was designed for playing games from you know, 1988, 89, and you put it through a big sound system where you've got loads of bass and all this range, and suddenly people are realising, wow, you can create these pallets of sound that cause a whole room to rumble and an entire dance floor of people to get up and boogie. Part of the appeal of this kind of music is the DIY element. A lot of chiptune DJs make or at least modify their own equipment. So if you do have games consoles like one of these lying around at home, how difficult is it to convert it into a musical instrument? Modifying the equipment and stuff is as key to me as actually producing the music. I enjoy modifying the things and coming to a hurdle and then working out the challenges to overcome that hurdle. While chip tunes are often created in bedrooms and home studios, the DJs insist it's the performance element that really makes this music come to life. Whether you like the genre will depend on your taste, but if you're of the right age to remember Super Mario and Tetris, this could be something to explore. Stuart Duggan, Sky News. So we've seen the kind of music you can make from the retro consoles we've all heard of, Game Boy and SNES, but what about an Atari or two Ataris? With me now is Gareth Morris, a.k.a. Gwem. You're a chiptunes DJ and these are yours. Yeah, that's right. They're uh, two Atari STs. They're about 30 years old. They uh, look good for 30 years old. Yeah, they are. They still do the business. Um, old tech, though. I've got these uh, floppy, floppy discs. discs. About a million times smaller than a hard disk on your normal computer. So how do they work? How do you use them? Each disk has 26 tracks, correspond to the 26 letters of the alphabet. So the letter keys correspond to the songs. And then the arrow keys allow me to adjust the tempo so I can beat mix a bit like a DJ in a club. OK. And, and you do play clubs, don't you? Yeah, that's right. I've got quite a few gigs coming up. I'm playing in Hamburg this weekend. Um, usually play out every few weekends. And are there any particular tracks that the crowd really goes well for? Well, they love my Tetris remix, actually. Oh, you still love playing Tetris. Can we, can we hear that now? Yeah, sure. OK, you take it away.
You're watching Swipe. Still to come, we meet a time-traveling rabbit from the future. The retro fun continues in our games review. But first, here's a roundup of some of this week's other tech news. Internet-connected pedals that let you know if someone tries to steal your bike launched on crowdfunding site Indiegogo this week. The French startup behind the technology says the smart pedals have a movement detection system, integrated GPS and track your activity. They also generate their own energy, so no need to charge any batteries or carry your phone on the move. US telecoms firm Verizon has bought AOL in a £2.8 billion deal. It's part of Verizon's push into the mobile video market. New York-based AOL, which owns the likes of the Huffington Post and TechCrunch, is the largest wireless carrier in the US, as well as an internet and TV provider. And it's official. Minecraft is the most watched game of all time on YouTube. The building block title reportedly has over 42 million videos on the site. Minecraft is now also the second most searched for term on YouTube. Other games on the site's top 10 most popular lists include Grand Theft Auto and League of Legends in second and third place. Now let's get back to the games. And in this week's games review, we've got one title which lets you live out your own Game of Thrones-esque fantasy adventure. Just don't let it take over your whole life. Here's Guy. Our city is plagued by crime. We need a leader to tackle the issues. And a leader that's an anthropomorphic rabbit. Not a Hero is the latest in a long line of indie games that have this kind of 8-bit visual aesthetic. It's kind of a really interesting kind of British take on a, on a genre. You, you play um, one of nine characters who are recruited by this purple bunny called Bunny Lord. But he's basically trying to become the British Prime Minister and he needs to stop something from happening in the future so he recruits these hyper-violent gun mercenaries. So looks amazing, really, really cool, and if you're into those retro games, then uh, you'll definitely get a kick out. Vote Bunny Lord! A violent today for a better tomorrow. We meet again, Witcher. Your Imperial Majesty. The Witcher 3 is one of those games that comes along every couple of years, which is one of those like massive open world games, like Skyrim, uh, that people who enter video games get drawn into and their partners begrudgingly complain about down the pub because they've lost their lives to them. So um, uh, The Witcher 3 is, is obviously the third game in the series, but it's actually uh, the most accessible game that I've played in the series. Previous games have been you know, quite, uh, quite RPG heavy, and this one reminded me a lot of a game called Red Dead Redemption, just because you spend so much time on the back of a horse, and the fact that it's a very kind of personal um, tale. You're essentially trying to find, uh, find a girl through this massive world, and that's the main plot line through it. But there's, like many open world action games, there's so much other stuff that you can do in this world. It's really, for me, the first game since Skyrim, which was an um, um, absolutely massive, immersive game, to really capture that, uh, that feeling of uh, as if you're playing almost in, a, in your own episode of Game of Thrones. It's got that kind of depth to it. But it's one of those uh, games that just draws you in and, and does not let go. And if you're into video games at all, uh, it's a must play. The racing genre is very, very competitive. You've got Forza Horizon and Forza on the Xbox and uh, Gran Turismo on PlayStation. And Project Cars is attempting to kind of muscle into that genre. The main development's been done out of London and what they've attempted to do is make a game that's got everything. So it's got all of the main tracks that you'd expect, absolutely shed loads of cars. And if you want to start your racing career from the very bottom, like Lewis Hamilton did, through karting and then go through to touring cars and then end up through the, through the sort, of, sort of racing ranks, then it's got all of that depth. I'm more of a fan of uh, the arcade racing games like Need for Speed and Burnout, but if you're a fan of racing sims like Forza and like um, Gran Turismo, then Project Cars is a really high quality entry into this uh, particular genre. That's it for this week, but don't forget you can stay up to date with all the latest tech news on Sky News for iPad, our smartphone app, skynews.com and our YouTube playlist. We'll see you again next time. Bye bye. Gotcha. Ah, oh, that's better. Protectyourbubble.com. Proud sponsors of Swipe on Sky News.